Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, like the title says, this is an unhaul. I kind of go through a secondary spring cleaning, but it's like a fall cleaning right before we get into the cold winter months and I switch into like hibernation mode. I like to purge my bookshelves. I just did a really big reorganization of all of these shelves and I, over the years, I've gotten pretty good at actually pulling books. I used to never want to get rid of books, but over the years, in order to like make room for all of the new incoming books that I have, you have to cycle books out. So I have gotten pretty ruthless over the years, not gonna lie, and it feels good. Some books I have, I like waver on for a while, other books I'm like, nope, you gotta go. So it's a nice like cathartic experience. So I'm gonna get into this video. Um, there's a lot of books and most of these are either going to be donated, they're going to be traded in at um, used bookstores to get store credit, or I will potentially sell them. A lot of you ask how I sell a lot of my books. I generally sell my books on Facebook groups. There are a lot of YA book sell and swap um, trading groups. If you search those words on Facebook, you can come up with a ton of different groups. I belong to like probably five or six of them. So I cross post a lot of these books and I list them and I sell them and it's how I make money to get more books, let's be real. That is kind of what is going to happen to a lot of these books. Some of my close uh, personal friends have actually called dibs on a bunch of these, so some of these are already being given to somebody else who will give them a more loving home than I have given them, but that is kind of where all of my books end up going. My mom works at a library, so whenever she needs new YA books, I donate a lot to her, I donate them to other library sections, I go to used bookstores, and I sell them. It's a whole process. I have lots of books, okay? Without further ado, let's get into the book. These are in no order. These are just how they happen to be stacked on the floor. Like I said, there's a lot of them. Okay, first book is Will Never Be Apart by Amiko Jean. I kept this because Amiko Jean just recently released a new book that I really enjoyed. This is a thriller, but I'm never gonna read it. I got it at Ollie's for like a dollar. It sat on my shelf for a year. That's gonna be the story for a lot of these books. I happen to get them for very cheap at like a secondary or used bookstore just because I have a hard time walking away from a book that's a couple dollars that I might potentially ever show interest in, but I don't have room for all of those books to live on my shelves forever. So that's what a lot of these books are, just a forewarning. Next book is The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. I will leave a video linked down below as to why I'm getting rid of this and my thoughts about it. Basically, Spencer from Common Spence uh, sums up my feelings about this book perfectly. Basically, this is a hot steaming pile of garbage. Next book that I have is Ever the Hunted by uh, Aaron Summerill. I believe I got this in an uppercase. A lot of these books I got in subscription boxes and I either had multiple copies of or I never got around to reading it. Some of my friends have read this over the past year or recently and have said that it's not great. And I have a lot of YA fantasy debut books. So this is just one that hasn't caught my interest. So it's gonna go. I have a copy of Night Film by Marisha Pessel. Honestly, I loved this book. It wasn't what I thought it was. But it's one of those books I don't see myself ever rereading it, so it's gotta go. I have Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett. Um, I recently read Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett as well. She's a really good YA contemporary writer. I like this, it was very cute, but it's not a contemporary story that I see keeping around and picking up again. Next is We All Looked Up by Tommy Wallach. I got this because it made its rounds on booktube, everyone was reading it, I just read it recently, and I did not like it. I have Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. I read this. I didn't really care for it. It wasn't terrible, but I didn't love it. And I believe the covers have changed since this one came out. Even though this is a gorgeous cover, it won't match even if I want to continue on with the series, which I don't. So this one's gotta go. I have The Love That Split the World by Emily Henry. I believe this is a really old school Owl Crate book that I just never really reached for. It's a book that I haven't seen great reviews for. It seems like the type of book that has a very select audience that will appreciate it, and that unfortunately is not me. You Will Be Mine by Natasha Preston. I believe I won this on a Goodreads giveaway or something. I read it. It was okay. It's a YA thriller. I know the twist now. I don't need to reread it. The Never List by Kothi Zahn. Um, this book I've had on my shelf for a long time and I've always wanted to read it and I finally got around to reading it and it was a letdown. So I'm kind of bitter about it. I have Guy in Real Life by Steve Brezinoff. This is kind of a contemporary nerdy fiction type story that I just, it didn't, it rubbed me the wrong way. It kind of poked fun at like girl gamers, but not in a healthy way. So there were just aspects of this that I was like, eh, I don't feel that. So 
it doesn't need to live on my shelf any longer. I have Timekeeper and an Arc of Chain Breaker by Tara Sim. Um, these are technically just going to my mom's house because I don't want to get rid of these because first of all, these covers are just gorgeous and I feel like this author is going somewhere. So I want to keep these in the family at least and my mom was interested in them. So these are technically not really an unhaul, but they're an unhaul from my personal library. I have Lotus and Thorn by Sarah Wilson Etienne. Um, this is another book that I picked up at Ollie's for a couple bucks and I really don't see myself reading it. I haven't heard the greatest things about it, so it's gonna go. I also have Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. This is a story that I'm still somewhat interested in, but they have since changed the covers. So while this cover is beautiful, it will never match if I ever choose to actually read and continue with the series. I have Dreamers Often Lie by Jacqueline West. This was a book outlet splurge that ended up in my cart somehow and I never read it, so... Yup. I have the first two books of, I don't even know what the series is called, but Walk on Earth a Stranger, Like a River Glorious, and I feel like the third book completed that actual statement, like all of the words in the titles go together and form like a sentence. Um, but these are by Ray Carson. I adore Ray Carson, but I have never grabbed these books. While the covers are stunning, that's pretty much the only reason I was keeping them. And these are two books that just take up space on the shelf that books that I actually am planning on reading will go. I have Monster by Frank Peretti. I picked this up at a used book sale. I'm never gonna read this. End of story. I have an extra copy of Rule by Ellen Goodlett. This is a recent release. Um, I do plan on reading this, but I actually just got this in multiple book boxes, so I have a couple copies of it. So this is gonna go probably to one of my friends, but no, no shade to this book. I haven't read it yet, but I just had a lot of them. I have Red Glass by Laura Ressau. Uh, I picked this up off Book Outlet because it sounded intriguing, I think. I honestly couldn't tell you, but it's sat on my shelf for years and I have never gotten around to it, so it's finally gonna go. Same thing with Beast Keeper by Kat Hellison. I believe this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and let's be real, the world doesn't need that many more of these. What We Saw by Aaron Hartzler. This is a hard-hitting YA contemporary that once you read it, you don't really want to relive it, so it doesn't need to, like, stay on my shelf and make me sad looking at it. The Midnight Dance by Nikki Katz. I have tried to read this every year for like the past two years during the Halloween season and I'm just not wanting to read it. I haven't heard great reviews of it. It just happens to have a stunning cover, but alas, it shall go. I have the Maze Runner trilogy because I'm pretty sure everyone unhauled these in the past year. Am I right? Or am I right? Um, I kind of held on to these because I really liked the Maze Runner. Like I held this in the same esteem as the Hunger Games because this was in Dystopian's Prime, but alas, Things have happened, and I don't really want them on my shelf anymore. Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here by Anna Breslau. Um, I believe this was an uppercase book. It was cute and funny and snarky. It fits into the, like, fangirl Eliza and her monsters type of genre where it follows, like, nerdy fan fiction writer girl, protagonist, YA contemporary. Um, it was cute, but it was not as great as those previous two titles that I just mentioned, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I have three of the books that we were reading for Friday Fright-a-thon. Um, Technically, I have I'll Be Gone in the Dark. I don't know if I ever really want to relive this horror story that was a real uh, true crime case. Um, the Last Time I Lied by Rayleigh Sager. Uh, I read it. It was okay. I didn't mind it, but I probably won't ever pick it up again. That's kind of how I feel about thrillers. Thrillers, like once you read them, you know the plot twist. The story kind of goes from there and you don't need to like relive it. Um, and then I have The Death of Mrs. Westaway, which I technically didn't even get to reading because that's when my appendix decided to remove itself from my body. Um, but I kind of bought it just to read with the girls, and I don't really see myself reading it on my own. So these three are gonna go. I'm keeping If We Were Villains, though, because mm, that book was magic. I have Brooding YA Hero um, by Carrie Doriso, and I, it's illustrated by Linnea Gear. Um, this was sent to me for a review. It sounded cute and funny, but I've never reached for it to pick it up and read it. I feel like it's definitely something that I would appreciate, but uh, bleh, bleh it's gonna go. Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. I'm having a hard time getting rid of this because the cover is stunning. They've revealed the cover for the second one and it's equally as stunning, but this didn't stand out to me. This is one of many YA debut fantasy first books in a series that came out in the past year and I read it. It was okay. It didn't blow my mind and it felt very formulaic as I was reading it, like nothing was really stand out about this, so I think I'm gonna get rid of it. This is one that I'm still unsure of, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna go. 
I have Sadie by Courtney Summers. Um, this book is just going to go to a friend, to be honest, because it's one of those stories that I feel the need to like pass it to different people because it needs to be read. It's a very important story. It may end up back on my shelf in the future, but for right now, it's going to make its rounds through my friends because I feel like this is a very important story that needs to be read in present day. So it's kind of a nut haul, but kind of not. I have Here to Say by Sarah Farzan. This was sent to me for review. Uh, I don't see myself picking it up to read it anytime soon. It's not really my type of story. It follows like basketball and boys and stuff. I don't know. I have Kids of Appetite by David Arnold, which is hard for me to get rid of because Mosquito Land was like my favorite book of 2016. Is that when that one came out? That was David Arnold's first book. I adored it. So I kind of swore that I was going to read everything else by him. This came out. I couldn't get into it and it was a huge disappointment and it sat on my shelf because I was determined to go back and give it a second chance and every time I did I proceeded to not like it so it's finally gonna go. I have Where I Live by Brenda Ruffiner. This came in a subscription box I believe and some of my friends who I trust and rely on their opinions read this and said that it was not great. So it's gonna go. Surprisingly, I have Car of All by Stephanie Garber. I believe this one is also signed, I think. Um, I also have a like chapter sampler of Legendary that I'm gonna stick with it. I'm one of the few people I didn't love this story. Actually, you know what? I think this book was pretty polarizing. I think a lot of people didn't like it too much. Um, I might read Legendary. I don't really know, but it's not a series that is like really gripping to me. I didn't really care for this one too much. While it's beautiful, I don't think I need to keep it. I have Flawed by Cecilia Ahern. This is a book that came in a subscription box. I swore I was gonna read it. It has a weird like vellumy type of cover situation going on, um, but I just have never reached for it in the past like three years. I have Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie. This is my second copy that I'm unhauling. I unhauled the Alcrate one a while ago. I did not care for this book. I know it was very popular. I ended up DNFing it. I just couldn't get into it and I don't really see myself trying again. So it's just gonna go. The Crowns Game by Evelyn Skye. This is going to a dear friend of mine who loves this series. So this is definitely going to a loving home because this was another hard one for me to get rid of because I feel like I will love it. But I also have it available on my library to listen to it if I feel the need. So she is gonna own the physical copy of it. Finally getting rid of Truth Witch and Wind Witch by Susan Dennard. These have sat on my shelf for a very long time. I believe they are both signed. Um, I'm having a hard time getting rid of these. Okay, so I read Truth Witch and I did not really like it. I was on the same boat with everybody else when this book came out where we were so hyped about it and it just didn't do well. Like the pacing was weird. There was like no world development. It was a ton of info dumping and it very much read like a first book even though it wasn't her first book to come out. And I've heard that it, things improved in the second one and the third one I know people are very excited about it and I feel bad because I've met Susan Dennard and she's a sweetheart. I did, I just, these have just been sitting there forever. I'm never gonna reach for them. So I think they're actually going to go to my mom because I think she might like them. So they will go to another loving home. Once in a Town Called Moth by Trilby Kent. This was given to me for a review um, a long time ago and I actually read it and reviewed it and really enjoyed it. This is a very unique story, but I don't see myself reaching for it ever again. So it's gonna go. I have The Girl Who Fell by S.M. Parker, contemporary, probably never gonna read it. I have a bind up of the Barrel Fire Quartet by Kate Tiernan. I just got this because I adore the Sweep series by Kate Tiernan and I wanted to read everything she wrote and I never read these. I literally probably have had this on my shelf since I was like 10. I don't know. A very long time. I have Black Flowers, White Lies by Yvonne Ventresca. This was given to me for review. I never ended up getting around to it. This was, I think, just sent in a like publicity push with a whole bunch of other review books. I never got around to this one. I have Not If I See You First by Eric Lindstrom. I actually just read this recently and I actually did really enjoy it. And this is an old school um, uppercase book that came with the actual post-its. If you guys remember a long time ago, uppercase used to put post-its in instead of giving you the like bookmark with the codes on it. That was pretty stellar. So this is an old Evercates book, but I actually did really enjoy this, but again, probably not going to read it again. I have The Sandcastle Empire by Kayla Olson. This was an Owlcrate book. It has like one of the first Owlcrate exclusive covers on it. Uh, I think it's like an island survival type story and I probably will never read it. I have Americana. Um, I actually have a second copy of this. So this one is not really like an unhaul, but it's an extra copy. So I will get around to this at some point in time. I know this is like a modern classic, so I will get to it 
just not with this specific copy. White Space by Ilsa J. Bick. Ilsa J. Bick blew me away with her Ashes series, uh, and this is her new one, and I just never picked it up. It sat on my shelf for a long time. I have According to Audrey by Happy Lachelle. This was sent to me for a review again, um, and I probably won't ever get to it. I have The Diminished by Caitlin Sage Patterson. This came, I believe, in a book box, and it seemed really great, and I might still get to it. This is one that I'm still wavering on. I think I might keep it, but for now it's in the unhaul pile. We'll see. We shall see. I have The Queens of Innes Lear by Tessa Grattan. This was a buddy read that I ended up DNFing along with other girls. We were just not feeling it at the time. I'm having mixed feelings because I read Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan, and it was freaking stunning. So I feel like I should give this one a second chance, but this is just a really dense retelling of King Lear, which is not necessarily my jam. We'll see. Right now it's taking up a lot of space on my shelf though, so it's probably gonna go. I have Vasa of the Night by Sarah Porter. Uh, this, I believe I got multiple copies of this, so I think I still have a copy floating around somewhere, so this one is just gonna go. These Shallow Graves and Revolution by Jennifer Donnelly. Jennifer Donnelly is one of my autobi authors. I adore everything that she has come out with, and every book that she's come out with has been vastly different from a previous one, and I love both of these books but they have been sitting on my shelf for years and years since I read them for like the first time around and I've never picked them up again. So I think they are just gonna go to another like loving home so somebody else can experience them for the first time. Even though they have a special place in my heart, they don't need to stay here. Whew, and that's it. That was a long unhaul, am I right? That was a lot of books. I think if I counted correctly, that was 57 books, which seems like a lot now that they're in a pile like around me. That was many books. So I hope I didn't hurt anybody's feelings. None of these books were like meant to like hurt you guys if you guys happen to love these books. They are just personally ones that I either have already read and don't need to read again or ones that I just don't see myself reaching for ever. So that's that's the reasoning behind my unhaul. It was never malicious towards anybody who happens to love these titles. But that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.